them ignorant, all of them blind, freelancers and ciphers and agents, fools to the end. Challenge the anthem, and you challenge the way of creation. Nothing is real, because nothing lasts. We're all clay to be molded, puppets of meat beholden to the shapers. They twist the anthem this way and that, like a boiling stew of dreams, the shapers stir the vat. Mederon was the son of Arcanists. He had lived his entire life in a cavern, underground, hiding. At ten years old, he had never seen the sky or an Urgoth or any beast but men. The world was utterly unknown to him, except for tales of horror and woe. But among the stories warning children to hide and obey their parents, Mederon heard one other, a whispered tale of a rebellion against the Urgoth and a legion rising to set all people free. So, at just ten years old, Mederon left the safety of the Arcanists to find the Legion of Dawn. His parents couldn't have just let him go, could they? They forbade him, of course. But he picked his moment and ran away. Raised to be a scholar, he knew how to read the secret signs of the Arcanists. He followed them through the wilds to the Legion of Dawn. Or he tried to, anyway. The Chimera had a different plan. All right, I'm sure this story doesn't start with a child killed by a Chimera. That would be a much shorter story than this one. He'd never seen a Chimera. He'd never even seen a Gravit, but he was a very good student. He learned all the warning signs that he was being hunted, and remembered stories about laying false trails. He led the Chimera on a long and winding path through the rocks, back and forth. He could never shake the creature, but it could never find him. Then, the other hunters came. General Tarsis, in the first javelin ever made, Testing her new armor, she found the Chimera stalking the boy. Lucky for Medaron. No luck about it. Tarsis followed his trail, just as the Chimera did. She was just learning the javelin. No one knew what it could do, not even the man who made it. Not trusting her suit's strength in a fight with the Chimera, she lured it into chasing her instead. While it ran after Tarsis, Leotrell found the boy and spirited him away to safety. After all that, he just went home again? It's not much of a story. I said safety, not home. They took him to their own camp, where the Legion hid at the time. When Tarsis asked where he lived and who his people were, Mederon replied, You're my people. The others tried to persuade him to return home, but after a long moment, Tarsis said, He is home. From then on, Mederon served as a page to the Legion of Dawn. Eventually, he became a Legionnaire himself. But that's another story. You've walked the path of valor. By now, I suppose that's not really a surprise. It's time to tell you how the freelancers began. Mederon was raised by the Legion of Dawn. He witnessed Tarsis testing the first javelin. He was at the General's side when the fortress was built, earned his own javelin, and fought beside her. Even at the Battle of Antium Pass. Of the company that stood with Tarsis and held back the Urgoth, only Mederon survived. I didn't know anyone survived the Battle of Antium Pass. It's easy to forget, since most stories focus on the General's death. In grief, the Legion tore itself in two. Half went with Magnastral, half with Arden Vasa, and one legionnaire who went with no one. Mederon stayed at the Fortress of Dawn, even though the gates were sealed and the lancers gone for good. You said the story was about freelancers. None of us were at the Fortress of Dawn. Of course not. It was locked up tight, alone in the courtyard. Mederon heard a distant roar. Okay, that's better. It was a sound he remembered, for it haunted his dreams. 
The roar of the Chimera Sindamor, the monster that stalked him long ago. The same one? Who was still alive? It vanished for more than a decade, but with the General's death, it returned. This time, he faces it down and wins. Not exactly. Alone, he stood no chance. But the city of Anshar lay helpless in its path. He had no choice. He found the Chimera's trail and followed it. Not to the monster, but to its lair. For he knew that if he silenced the relic that created it, Cindermore would lose its power. That's a much better idea, but it doesn't make for a very heroic tale. Well, it might end up both. Mederon found the relic, though the monster was right beside it. But he had plenty of experience in laying false trails. Mederon woke the Chimera, and it chased his false tracks while he slipped past and silenced the relic. Cindermore fell, and the Lancer finally defeated the beast that stalked him long ago. In that moment, Mederon knew his calling, to walk the path of valor even if he walked it alone. Of all the Legionnaires, Magnus Strahl was the most renowned for her feats of strength. But it wasn't always so. I've only ever heard about Strahl leaving the Legion. Nothing about what she did before. Bastion likes to forget that she was ever a legionnaire. The Dominion, that she was flawed and human. But she was many things, loyal and a deserter, ordinary and legendary. She came to the Legion of Dawn as a young girl. Her village was raided and everyone taken. Almost. She was so small she hid inside a basket. The Urgoth surely caught her scent, but they thought her too weak to bother taking. I didn't think Urgoth ever left humans behind during their raids. Stories say they sometimes left the weak, sickly, and elderly. Alone, unarmed, she followed the secret arcanist signs to Sanctuary, where the rebels hid and plotted. There, Strahl begged Tarsis to let her join the Legion, to grant her vengeance. But the General refused. She said Magna wasn't ready, and sent her away. Strahl couldn't accept that, so she went out alone to fight the Urgoth. Without a javelin? That's insane. She set traps, ambushes. She poisoned spears and knives. Any small advantage she could take against a vastly superior enemy, she gladly took. She nearly died dozens of times, but vengeance drove her onward. And the Urgoth fell. She carried trophies to the sanctuary, day after day, week after week. She fought even though the odds were against her. That's what the Legion of Dawn was all about. Finally, General Tarsis spoke with her. What do you want? She asked. I want to join the Legion of Dawn, Magna replied. Tarsis looked at her and asked, Why? You already have your revenge. The General looked to the many, many Urgoth trophies Strahl fought for. At first, Strahl had no answer. Then, after a long moment, she said, It's where I belong. To which Tarsis answered, then you're finally ready to join us. So what happened? How did Strahl end up leaving the Legion and founding the Dominion? That's a story for another time. So, now that you've walked in her footsteps, let me tell you the final tale of Magna Strahl. When General Tarsis fell, those closest to her went into mourning. Each carried grief in their own way. For Magna, the loss of her friend and leader turned to rage. She couldn't rest while a single Urgoth lived. They were already broken by the sword of Fulminus, terrified, fleeing to the dark corners of the world. But hard on their heels, Strahl came, hunting them one by one. This sounds like the other story you told me. Listen to enough tales of Magna Strahl and a pattern emerges. When at last her scouts found no more enemies, she returned to the Fortress of Dawn. There she found the doors sealed. The Legionnaires were preparing to leave it forever. Even after I went inside, I've never heard why the Fortress was sealed up. 
I'm getting to that part. While Strahl eased her grief with battle, Arden Vasa fixated on his duty. With her final breath, Tarsis had made him swear Antium would not fall, no matter the cost. At her command, Vasa prepared to take the entire Legion of Dawn to safeguard Antium for all time. Outraged at what she saw as desertion, Strahl ordered the Lancers to halt, and they obeyed. Her general secured a future for all people, not just Antium. She called for the Legion to follow her, to battle the enemy in the darkness where they'd fled. So which one had the right idea? Well, if you ask a Sentinel, Arden Vasa. Ask a Paladin, it's Strahl. A freelancer usually says neither. Strahl was admired, some might say revered, by many. And they gladly joined her cause. Vasa called them traitors. Strahl declared those who stayed behind were cowards. And the Legion broke. Those who followed Magna Strahl called themselves paladins and went north to pursue the enemies of man. They vanished into the darkness and were never heard from again. How did the Paladins become the Dominion? I wish I knew that story. I doubt even the Dominion knows it, really. They lost the path. They no longer use their strength to protect anyone, let alone everyone. I doubt anyone in the Dominion even remembers that was their purpose. That's why it's vital that we remember. Strahl's story and the path of might cannot be allowed to die. I'll remember. Good. What do you think you're doing? You're... Before the Battle of Antium Pass, the Legion's test of resolve had a different basis. It began with Leotrel, the General's oldest friend. When Tarsis first raised an army against the Urgoth, Leotrel was with her. The Arcanists were hidden from them. They hadn't yet found Arden Vasa. No lances, no javelins, no weapons, no fortress. Not even a good hiding place. Nothing but the vision of Helena Tarsis and Leotrell's unbreakable will. I've never heard about the beginning of the Legion before. In a way, it has no beginning. Where and when did Tarsis and Leotrell meet? No one remembers. Maybe it was once such common knowledge that no one thought to pass it on. There are countless towns that now claim to be the birthplace of General Tarsus. The truth is lost. A legion needs soldiers. And it began with just one. The two set out to find the Urgoth. The plan was simple. Follow the raiders and warn villages in their path. At first, they succeeded in getting word of the coming Urgoth to people in time. Villagers fled. But the longer the Urgoth went without a catch, the faster it spurred their hunt. Finally, Tarsis and Leotrell arrived at a town with the Urgoth on their heels. Flight was impossible, so they stood and fought. Fighting Urgoth without a javelin, by themselves, that took guts? Tarsis hoped to slow the Urgoth enough that some villagers could escape. The two of them, alone, armed with simple weapons, were little more than an annoyance to the enemy. But they fought. Despite greater numbers, strength, and weapons, the Urgoth could not subdue them. Finally, with Tarsis wounded and Leotrell at the point of exhaustion, the two prepared for the end. But the villagers rallied. With tools and improvised weapons, they joined the battle and routed the enemy. Many innocents were taken that night, but not all of them. Because people fought the inevitable. And the rest is a tale for another time. You've walked the path of resolve. It's a hard one to travel. You're not going to tell me about the last stand of General Tarsus now, are you? Because I've heard that story many times before. No. This is the story of how the Legion endured its own destruction. While Vasa and Strahl fought about which way to take their lances, Leotrell prepared. She prepared her oldest friend for burial. She prepared places for all the fallen, and she prepared the way for those still to come. She took Garrett's volumes of the Legion from the Fortress of Dawn before it was sealed. She left Helena's signet in the General's tomb, waiting for the right hand to reclaim it. 
Are you saying she knew I would need to look for the Javelin of Dawn? No, of course not. But she knew better than anyone not to surrender to the inevitable. She would not abandon her friend or her path, even though the battle was over. The world would always need Tarsis, and Tarsis would always need legionnaires. She followed Arden Vasa to Antium for a time, and left the records with trusted lancers to be maintained and passed down, generation after generation. To you, this is your story. Our story. The Legion lives on through us. What happened to Leotrell? Oh, once her preparations were complete, her plans in motion, she left Antium and vanished, like the beginning. The end of her story is a mystery. But it's not beginnings or endings that matter. It's the path you follow between them. What do you think you're doing? You're damaging those books. Stop that at once. I need to mark my place. Don't fold the pages. Use a bookmark like a civilized person. Bookmarks fall out. Are you juggling them? No? Then they'll be fine. Use a bookmark. to see a freelancer. Red Tassin's report. Glad we worked with Faye. Owen's a little shit. Freelancer, you're here. Good. What have you got for me, Bryn? Remember that ultra-powerful Shaper relic the Scars were enhancing with Arcanist machinery? Yeah, the Medi Scar is saying the relic would bring down the fort. The Scars hit it well, but thanks to our beacons, I may be onto something. We're detecting a massive Scar presence and a power signature I don't recognize. It's got to be the relic. I'm on it. Go, Freelancer, and thank you. Okay, let's try again. Tell me a memory, anything. You broke your arm climbing your father's strider. I've never broken anything, but that does sound like me. Oh, it's still wrong. It's okay, we'll figure it out, together. I need a break. Oh, of course. Hi, Merelda. How are you? I don't know. 
I went looking for your father's ashes so we could spread them. They weren't there. Doesn't mean we still can't have a memorial for him. No, the vase wasn't there. And it's strange, now that I'm trying to remember some things you've said, I wonder. I don't know if the vase was ever there. I'm not sure what's happening anymore. That's actually a good sign. That I have a knack for losing stuff. That you're realizing, well, what you thought was true isn't. A vase? Why is it so important? Your dad, of course. He died. But I already knew that. How did he die? He... You were hurt. And... I was? How? This is important. No. I don't want to remember that day. Whatever it is, I'm right here. It's okay. Just let it out. Even if it almost killed me? Except it didn't. You're still here. You're strong. What happened? It was... a warm day. Fremark was hot that time of year. You were playing with your father, pretending you were a javelin pilot. He was roaring like an ursix, chasing you. You were so young. Your little legs scampering around, so happy. But then... It's okay. The sirens started. Gunfire was everywhere. Someone shouted, the Dominion are here. Then the explosions... I heard you scream. And over. Your father was bleeding, but you... You were under the rubble. Piles of concrete. I tried lifting it, but it was too heavy. You were yelling. Daddy's hurt. Help Daddy. I pulled him away. Then there was another explosion. The rubble collapsed. But you... You... You can do this. You died. My brave little girl. You were supposed to grow up and be a freelancer, fall in love, become a woman. But you never did. Because I couldn't save you. Can you ever forgive me? It's better if you forgive yourself. How can I? Your father. He died the next day. They took him away. I never got to bury him. Or you. None of it was your fault. But I loved them. So much. They wouldn't want you to blame yourself. They'd want you to be happy again. Can you do that? I... I think so. Yes. But... You're not Serana, are you? No, I'm just a freelancer who reminds you of her. You are everything I'd hoped she'd become. There's a mother out there lucky to have you as a daughter. What you've done for me, you saved me. I just gave you a little nudge. You saved yourself. My thanks could never be enough, but... Thank you. Be well. Take care of yourself. Hey, we're doing well out there. Come check it out. On my way here this morning, three separate people tried to sell me Grabit insurance. Okay, Freelancer, we have a situation. What's going on? Contract came in from some nervous arcanists. They uncovered a cache of Shaper relics. Such things are valuable to the wrong sort of people. And they're out there alone? Why didn't they ask for protection before? Maybe they heard about a Freelancer selling arcanists to the Scars. Takes in his outlaws. Damn that guy. He's growing bold. More and more contracts compromised. People are talking. 
Bad talking. <sighs> and now this. These relics. They could do some real damage in the wrong hands. Understood. Got into enough fights about freelancers over the years. 